Dynamic lineups for Google Ads are a unique targeting option if you are running video campaigns. They can be beneficial for advertisers looking to capitalize on unique seasonal events, or you may find out that your target audience likes to watch a certain mix of content and you want to get in front of users who engage with that specific type of content. So in this video, we will show you what dynamic lineups are, where they exist when you're setting up a video campaign. Most importantly, we're going to show you what options are there, especially the ones that are broken out by the countries that are allowed to use dynamic lineups. And we'll show you what those countries are. And then we'll show you maybe some do's and do nots of when you may or may not want to use dynamic lineups for your video campaigns. Now, I know I just said we would start in Google ads, but I wanted to mention one thing, and this could save some of you some time, depending on where you're watching this video. This is because dynamic lineups are only available in certain countries as of right now. And as we can see on this slide, dynamic lineups are only available in these 10 countries. One would assume that more will come down the line to an eventual worldwide rollout. But once we get to the part where we can actually see several of the options for dynamic lineups, we're going to see that there are certain topics that are categorized by these 10 countries to give the advertiser an option to make your targeting more regional, potentially more familiar with the users you were trying to reach. Okay, that's it about countries. Now we can go into Google Ads. Let's start by creating a new video campaign. I'm going to click on the blue plus button and then click on new campaign. Not too long ago, dynamic lineups used to be available for any campaign objective that had video campaigns as a campaign type. Well, that recently changed, and I talk about it in my updated video about placement targeting for YouTube ads. You could check out that video here. In that video, I talk about how content targeting rules have changed for certain campaign objectives. For video action campaigns, which are the objectives of either sales, leads, or website traffic, you can no longer use content targeting. And content targeting includes keyword targeting, topic targeting, or placement targeting. Dynamic lineups are part of placement targeting. So we've lost that control from these three campaign objectives. So whenever I would like to use dynamic lineups, I personally like to create a campaign without a goals guidance. I want to have a little bit more control. So that is what I'm going to choose for this demo. There we see the campaign type. Of course, we want video. Choose the campaign type for you. I'm going to leave it as is to focus on views and then click continue. Next step we get with any campaign creation will be the campaign settings. But since we already know dynamic lineups are a targeting option that will exist at the ad group level. So I'm not going to go through the rest of the campaign settings. Go ahead, name your campaign, fill in whatever is important for you, whatever you want to set to meet the best goals of the campaign. So for now, I'm just going to go to the ad group. Here you can name your ad group because the next part I'm going to talk about is my opinion. So you can take it for what it's worth, but I like to look at dynamic lineups just the same as I do when I'm running manual placement ad groups. And what I mean by that is that when I'm running a dynamic lineup ad group, I do not like to layer on any additional targeting and I'll show you why dynamic lineups live under placement, which is under the content section, which we still get within this objective. If I open this up, in this section, whether you're creating a new campaign or you're editing an already active ad group, dynamic lineups will live under these video lineups. When I'm handpicking placements, even though dynamic lineups are broader than specific videos or YouTube channels, I originally like to see how this video lineup will do standing on its own. You can control the volume with your budget. You can control the frequency within your settings. But if I'm really trying to get new reach, and if I find a lineup where I'm comfortable that the vast majority of people who watch videos within these topics or categories are going to be relevant, I want to try to get in front of all of them first before I start excluding people, especially if I've never tried a targeting option before. So again, that's how I first approach it. If it's a brand new targeting option, I'm trying. But if you have a different approach, I'd love to hear about it. But here is where we see our video lineups option. These aren't ones that we can customly create. So if I click on it, we see in my area, since I am in the United States, they do have a specific section for my region, but we also see up above that there's popular content worldwide. The reason that they're called dynamic lineups is that they are automatically updated by Google. If you have a more universal product and you just want to be on what's popular right now, you can just target popular YouTube content worldwide. Now that does say worldwide, but understand that it's still going to fall in line with the location targeting options that you have set at the campaign level. Then we see this option where you can target Google video partners content worldwide. 
just like video action campaigns no longer allow you to use content targeting, video action campaigns also don't allow you to turn off the display network. And depending on what your targeting might match to, Google says your ad could appear on YouTube or display network placements that match your other targeting. This is exactly why I don't want to layer on any additional targeting and most likely I will go back to the campaign settings and turn off video partners, display network, that whole sort of thing. I want to keep the user on YouTube and the best objective to do that is the one I selected, creating a campaign without a goals guidance. So that's the popular content worldwide option. There's the only two. And now let's look at content for the United States. I am not going to go through all 177 options. There's just way too many, but we'll go through a few topics just to see what options are there so you get an understanding of what you might want to look for. I mentioned in the intro that dynamic lineups could be beneficial if you want to capitalize or get in front of users during seasonal times or maybe seasonal events. So I just started typing in Olympics and there's one option there just for the summer Olympics. So maybe when the time comes again, everyone gets in the Olympic spirit, you can have a limited run seasonal campaign if you have a product or service that kind of matches into how people's moods are when they're watching Olympic videos. Let's look at another one. I typed in Christmas, big holiday here, and it gave us two options. Yes, there's Christmas music and there's a variety of other music genre video lineups that you could target, but just people who are celebrating Christmas. I'm sure there's some people who do celebrate it all year round, but for the most part, it's a very seasonal end of the year type thing. So if you wanna get in front of the people in the holiday spirit, probably a little bit before Black Friday, and maybe even through the new year, Here's a potential new targeting option for you to test. And I'm gonna state again, as it's dynamic, these lineups will update. Think of all the new content that comes every single year. Anything that's relevant, you could potentially get in front of those users. But let me X out this search term, and let's go back and look at video lineups. And then this is just, again, content for the United States. We see a variety of options, and I'm gonna scroll kind of quick. There's accounting. You're gonna see a lot of gaming options. Esports will come eventually. There's different sports. Cars, we have more sports again. A few budget-friendly options. There's a variety of business, celebrity stuff, college sports. We're gonna see some cooking, there's dance. This one I found interesting. There are several options for families with kids in different categories there, different kid age ranges, building blocks like Lego, trains, cartoons. So again, a lot of families with kids options. Keep scrolling down past all those. A few more family stuff. Gardening, green products, hairstyling, healthy cooking, a couple home improvement ones. We see some movie genres, TV genres, luxury goods, making slime. Sure. Here are all the different music categories. There's going to be several of them. I keep scrolling down. Saw so parent blogs, outdoor recreation, personal finance, pride topics, more sports, more TV show genres. There's the Summer Olympics, more food options more TV categories, so on and so on and so on, and then a couple more fitness ones at the bottom. So I did scroll kind of fast. The keyword option is always there for you to look at and see what options are gonna be best for you. Then of course, if you really want to, you can look at content for other countries. You will see the options that are available. will call out the country next to it, but understand that user behavior will be different. The action films that are popular in one country will be different in another country. And no, you won't be targeting people in Japan if I select this option. You're just going to be targeting people within whatever location targeting options you have set within the campaign level who may be interested in Japanese action films. Okay, always keep in mind that the lineups are available on the content category. You're not targeting people within these areas. If I scroll back up, I'm just going to target these two since they are familiar. But if I want to get a better understanding of what type of people make up these audiences, all you have to do is hover your mouse over one of them. They show you the weekly impressions that make up each of the video lineups, showing it's just based on the entire United States and just the English language. That is what I had set up by default within my campaign settings. So as you update your location and language targeting, this will also change. But one thing we note is that it gives us different information here about what makes up the target audience. This is something I like to come back to. If I'm running a video lineup campaign, it's successful in my eyes of reaching an engaged audience. Maybe I'm seeing conversions coming from it. I like to come back to this area and see what are the three audiences that Google gives us that make up this specific video lineup. Coffee shop regulars, women's media fans, green living enthusiasts. 
I make note of these and I'm going to show you why and I'm going to go to a different tab. I just have a different ad group open, one that we use for a different demo and you can see I'm in the audience section, not placements. I am in the audience section. Let's type in one of those audiences that made up the yoga and Pilates video lineup. One was coffee shop regulars. What do you know? It's an affinity audience. Let's try another one. Well, what do you know? It's also an affinity audience. Let's try the third one. Paste it in the last one and it's also there. So these three affinity audiences are the top three audiences that make up the yoga and Pilates dynamic lineup targeting option. If I'm seeing success with that one video lineup, I may want to consider testing out an even higher level campaign. Yes, affinity level is going to be higher, definitely more TV demographic style targeting, and maybe see what type of engagement I get by going after these affinity audiences. But I'm going to start with dynamic lineups first because it's going to be a little bit more focused. But we see how limited the targeting option of dynamic lineups are. Affinity audiences are audiences. It's right in the name. So you'll be able to use affinity audiences in the video action campaigns that can no longer use content targeting. And then with similar audiences no longer available, you could, if you wanted to choose audience expansion, I will never check this button. To me, I can find other targeting options to test instead. So it went on a little sidetrack there, but you can see how we can use video lineups to find other targeting options that you may want to test for some of your awareness campaigns. I'm going to leave these two in here. And then I'm not going to bore you with the rest of the campaign setup. So let me finish this up really quick and we can jump ahead to the next section. Okay. I have the campaign completed. Once I published it, they sent me back to the ad group view, but whenever your campaign is running, if you want to check on performance, you can head over to content and then look at placements. Since I added multiple video lineups within the same ad group, the placements report is the best place to look at how your video lineups are performing. You can adjust your columns to look at, different frequency levels. I didn't choose these columns. They just popped up. So feel free to adjust the columns to maybe look at more video view options, specifically the YouTube column options that are available. As always, it's depending on what your goals of the campaign are. And then what you should also do, depending on what view you are using, as I open this up, always make sure to review where your ad showed. Nothing's going to pop up for me. I just launched this campaign. Depending on your view, this could also still live under the placements report where we were just at. But reviewing where your ad showed will give you better insights about what types of videos you're appearing on when you're targeting these video lineups. Again, another reason why I like to leave dynamic lineups within their own ad group, because then you could select any videos that don't seem relevant at all and exclude them from the ad group or the entire campaign, whatever you want to do. But if you find certain gem videos that are just performing very, very well, you may consider finding the URLs for those specific videos and start moving them into a managed placement campaign where you're only targeting your best performing YouTube video placements. Being fully honest, I've seen all types of placement targetings work very well, sometimes poorly within different types of campaigns. It's just something that we've always tested with our clients. But what has worked best for us is starting off with a limited approach, seeing how a higher level audience engages with our ads, and then using the information from dynamic lineups to try to find newer targeting options to test, possibly for other YouTube campaigns, but also some display and discovery as well. If you have any other questions on what dynamic lineups are and how they work for video campaigns, please let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the super thanks button.